if it does this and can do it consistently, I mean, why do you buy a $100 drill? I'm looking for the cheapest drill that I can find on Amazon, and in order to make this mean something, I've got to put constraints on my search. So I wanted to buy the cheapest drill that fits the specs of the drills that are most commonly used today, and they're also the ones that I currently own. So this gives me a nice foundation for comparison. So my criteria are the cheapest cordless drill that's at least 18 volt. It also needs to obviously come with a battery. Now the reason I say that is because we'll come across some results that are pretty cheap, but they're tool only. So buying the battery to go with it will make it more expensive than other drills. After wading through page after page of drill parts, skipping the sponsored results, and being tricked for just a second by drill hangers and cases and other things like that, I came across this probably Whaley. I was pretty excited because not only was this ridiculously cheap, it was a 21 volt drill. But of course, that didn't last long because I noticed that the shipping was gonna cost $24.49. This was one of those listings that was trying to pull a fast one, so I kept on searching. I went past some Black & Decker 12 volt drills, some Ryobi tool only drills, and then I saw the most beautiful thing I've seen on the internet, a drill with brush attachments included for under $30 and free shipping. I have to hand it to them. The marketing department is making this drill stand out. But look at this picture. It's got a belt sander and some wood and the drill and then the brushes. Okay. It also says that it's an impact drill driver in the title. That's almost certainly either false advertising or more likely just a misunderstanding by their marketing team of what an impact drill actually is. But we'll see when I get it here and get it opened up. This was the cheapest drill that fit my criteria, so I invited it to my house. I became the owner of a shiny new PowerSmart drill. Well, would you look at what I got? Let's open this up and see our new drill. Got the battery charger, battery, tool clip. Aha! Here's why we really bought this drill, the brush attachments. And then we got a bit holder. Here is the drill. I'll be honest, this does not feel terrible. I mean, it's obviously a lot cheaper. You can just tell some of the fit and finish. There's some burrs in the plastic here, but it's not as bad as I would have guessed. It's got some nice grip on there. Ooh, that switch is not great. Oh gosh. Yeah, that switch does not go, does not go, there it goes. It's coming around. We just had to work it out a little bit. Oh, oh it won't go anymore. Well, this is kind of off to a bad start. I noticed there's quite a few typos in here. That doesn't have to mean anything, but it just shows a lack of care and attention, which probably extends to the tool. So we'll see how that plays out. I'm not doing a full review on this, but I just wanted to bring up a couple things that I'm noticing here, just holding the drill and looking at it. The first one is, is this is really the size of a 12 volt drill. I'm shocked that it's 20 volt. The motor is really small. I've got the Porter cable 20 volt here. You can see how small that is. So almost certainly the motor is gonna be underpowered. I was expecting that. I mean, it's a $30 drill. The second thing is it is definitely not an impact. So they need to remove that from their title. I also noticed some scrapes. It doesn't look like it was used, but it, it looks like I mean, there's definitely blemishes, possibly from the factory. That's really not that big of a deal to me, but you just don't want to buy a brand new drill and have it all scuffed up. What I was saying before about the gear switch not fully engaging could be a feature. I mean, it won't fully engage unless you kind of play with the chuck here. It'll snap into place. So that's interesting. It's now Monday. I didn't do anything with this over the weekend, which was actually kind of nice. Now that I've got a charged up battery, I'm gonna test the voltage on this, and then we'll compare it to the DeWalt and the Porter cable. Keep in mind that these 20 volt batteries are not actually 20 volt when you're using them. They only read 20 volt when they're fully charged under no load. As soon as you start using them, put them under a load, then they drop down to around 18 volt. 
So these should read a little bit over 20 volts since they're charged up. So let's start with the DeWalt. 20.36 and 20.48. So those are reading what they should read. Let's try the PowerSmart and see where it reads. So it's starting out around 20, but then it's dropping quickly down around 19, and that's with no load fully charged. I can't imagine that all of these aren't using the same battery packs. Maybe they're not, but that would surprise me. It's more likely that the QA process is not as good for this one, or it could be the way they have it wired up inside. I don't know, but it's obvious that this is not holding the voltage that these other two are. We'll see how that affects the performance of the drill. All right, I've got some reflective tape on here, so let's test the RPMs, how fast this spins. It says that in first gear, it gets up to 350 RPM, second gear is 1500 RPM. So let's start in first gear. So that's pretty accurate, about 389, 388 RPM. Let's see what second gear looks like. Second gear, not quite getting up to 1500 RPM. All right, the DeWalt says that it should be 450 in first gear, 1800 in second gear, but remember, this is a couple of years old. I've used this drill a lot. It's been dropped. The battery also has been used for a couple of years, but let's see where it reads. So around 430, that is a little bit under the 450 rating. And we'll move to second gear. 1570, which is way under its rating. First gear should be 350, second gear should be 1500. So about 320, not too far under its rating. And we'll see about gear two. So around 1370. All right, so now I wanna run this through a couple of just normal tests, and then I'm gonna use it on a project that I'm working on, assuming that it is up to the task. And then I'll come back and give you my thoughts after I use it on that project a little bit. Oh, it doesn't have a... If, if it's in forward, you can still turn it backwards. That's odd. Once you tighten these down, it ratchets. So this doesn't have a ratcheting system. So I'm assuming they want you to hold this bottom part and tighten it, turn them the opposite way, but I can barely, I can barely get a hold of that. Hopefully that's tight enough. All right, now let's recreate just driving a screw into a stud. So this is just if you're mounting something on the wall, you find the stud and you want to drill straight into the side of it. All right, no problem there. Let's try a longer screw. All right, very good. Actually got quite a bit of power. Really should be in gear one to drive screws, so let me go back to that. And I've turned the clutch ring to a high setting, but now the clutch should engage. All right, very good. Let's take it up to 18. All right, let's see what it does in some stronger wood. This is walnut. I generally wouldn't drive a screw just right into walnut like this, into hardwood, but let's see how this handles it. And I figured that would happen. It's so hard to tighten this thing that I have a feeling my drill bits and bit holders are gonna be falling out left and right. Uh -oh. I'm gonna be honest, this thing has a lot more torque than I thought it would. This is a timber lock screw, it's a four inch, and this is made to replace a 3 8 lag screw, so this is really strong. I use these on my multi-cabinet, as heavy as that thing was. They're really strong, got a lot of sheer strength, and I recommend them for heavy-duty jobs. Now let's see if this can drive a lag screw into a stud. No 
don't want to drill into the workbench here. Golly. Wow. No trouble at all. I don't really even need to compare it to anything. I was going to use the DeWalt because I figured this would be underpowered and use the DeWalt to show just the difference between the two, but it seems like it's got every bit of power the DeWalt has. I'm really, really surprised. Before we get too excited, we need to make sure that this can deliver those results for an extended period of time. And like I said before, this is not a tool review. I really don't do tool reviews. This is not a scientific test of this drill. I'm just doing a couple of practical things and now I'm gonna use it on a project I'm working on just to see if it will last for a while. We need to make sure the battery lasts longer than seven seconds and we need to make sure that it doesn't lose its power as the battery drained. It's lithium ion, so it shouldn't, but we need to verify all of that. But so far, this drill is... If you heard that crazy noise there, it's because the switch didn't get engaged all the way. Because sometimes you go part of the way and it'll be okay, it'll, it'll engage. But that time it sort of got lost in the middle and was grinding the gears. I'm honestly shocked at how powerful this little drill is. And it's still on its first charge. I went through and built this entire porch swing, probably 50 to 60 screws, drilling holes and then driving the screws. Still on the first charge, still driving them in just fine. Is this the best drill ever made? It's not. It's got some build issues. The gears selector doesn't want to go into place. It slips sometimes. For around 30 bucks with tax at the time of this video, I don't think you can go wrong with this if you just need a cheap extra drill around the house or around the shop. So I'll put a link down below and you can go check it out. Make sure you like this video and share it. Check out one of these videos next and I'll see you over there.